Every time I lift my hands, it's because of you. Every time I lift my voice, it's because of you. Every time I give you praise, it's because of you. Every time I bless your name, it's because of you. Every time I lift my hands, it's because of you. Every time I lift my voice, it's because of you. Every time I give you praise, it's because of you. Every time I bless your name, it's because of you. It's because of you that I sing, because of you that I praise, because of you that I worship and bow down to your name every day, because of you that I dance, because of you that I shout, because of you that I leap for joy with a heart that has no doubt. Every time I lift my hands, it's because of you. Every time I lift my voice, it's because of you. Every time I give you praise, it's because of you. Every time I bless your name, it's because of you. It's because of you that I sing, because of you that I praise, because of you that I worship and bow down to your name every day. Because of you that I dance, because of you that I shout, because of you that I leap for joy with a heart that has no doubt. It's because of you that I sing, because of you that I praise, because of you that I worship and bow down to your name every day. Because of you that I dance, because of you that I shout, because of you that I leap for joy with a heart that has no doubt. It's because of Jesus. 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 Freedom, 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 freedom. It's because of you that I see. your name every day because of you that I dance because of you that I shout because of you that I leap for joy with a heart that has no doubt it's because of Jesus it's because of Jesus it's because of Jesus it's because of Jesus we have freedom No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. Well, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. It's because of you that I sing, because of you that I praise, 
Because of you that I worship and bow down to your name every day. Because of you that I dance. Because of you that I shout. Because of you that I leap for joy with a heart that has no doubt. It's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. We have freedom. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. How many have that freedom that we're singing about tonight? He who the Son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. I don't have to be bound by the things in this world. I don't have to be bound by the vices of this world, but I can walk in liberty. He says that it's not giving you a liberty so you can just sin under the grace of God. He says, God forbid that we continue in sin. The grace may abound, but God's pulled us out of a world of darkness. God's pulled us out of a world of sin so that we can live a life of freedom and living for God. Hallelujah. Sometimes people look at us and say, you're a people of just a bunch of rules. No, I'm saved unto some things. I'm saved from some things, but God has drawn us out of those things unto some things that are beautiful and living for God. There is nothing that can replace the peace that passes understanding and living for God. There is nothing that replaces the joy of the Holy Ghost that is our strength. I'm free today. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. No more darkness. I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. And he says, you've overcome by the word of your testimony. If God's done something good in your life, you can't just keep it to yourself. uh, But you ought to start shouting, it's because of Jesus. Uh, I didn't get here on my own. Uh, It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done. uh, But it's by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So if there's good things happening in your life, you ought to just stand back and say, it's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. I've got a reason to praise. I've got a reason to worship. Hallelujah. Things may not be perfect in my life right now, but I tell you, I wouldn't trade one day living for God to live in this world of sin and bondage and addiction that just uses you up and throws you away when it's done. I'm glad I'm a part of the church today and I can live and I can walk in the liberty wherewith he hath made us free. Hallelujah. And I feel liberty in the house of God tonight. It's good to be with all of you. And while we're feeling the presence of God, I wonder if we could take some needs before the Lord. There's a special need. I'm going to leave it as a bit of an unspoken request here, Uh, but we need to pray for the ILC church family and also for Pastor Booker as well this week. And uh, there's, there's just some circumstances. We just need to pray for them. Our brothers and sisters, they pray for us. I receive text messages very often from people that are saying they're praying for us, praying for our family and praying for our church. And we, in turn, should not just think about our own lives and our own circumstances, but also to think about the needs of others. We're here to pray for somebody else, someone in this state, someone else in this city. And I'm asking that we would pray a special prayer for churches and just churches throughout this valley and also churches that are associated with this church, that God would give them apostolic revival. Revival's not just happening here. It's happening all across this nation. And I believe that God is setting up and preparing the church to take this message and truth forward. And I'm excited to be right in the middle of what God is doing in this place. If you have an unspoken uh, need, I wonder if you could just slip your hand in the air. God knows and sees every single need and situation in this place. God, we worship you. We're mindful of your spirit. We're mindful of your desire to work and to move in this place, God. I pray that you would let our prayers not just be contained to this building, God, not just to our own situations, not 
not just to our own needs, but God, that it would reach into a lost and hurting and a dark world, God, that surrounds us. I pray, God, for this city. I pray for this community, God. And we pray for churches that are associated with us. We pray, God, for the ILC church body today. I pray that you would touch the pastors, God. I pray that you would give wisdom and strength and anointing, God. I pray that you would bless them, God. Bless them with buildings, God. Bless them with the ability to move forward into apostolic revival in the name of Jesus. We're believing. We're trusting, God. You're strengthening the church. And we believe that you're able, God, to strengthen us as your people to do your perfect work. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I feel faith in the house of God tonight. How many are making room for a miracle? Hallelujah. How many are really making room for miracles? Our capacity is only going to be contained by what we're willing to let God do. Dream big in the kingdom of God. Believe big in the kingdom of God. And God is able to do something that will blow our minds, something beyond what we could even comprehend or even imagine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I mean, God bless you for standing. You may be seated. I have about four weeks worth of things in me, but I'm not going to let it all come out right now. I know it's midweek service, and I'm not the preacher tonight, and uh, I appreciate my friend, a friend to this church, a faithful friend, and uh, we grew up arguing, playing softball together, attempting to dribble basketballs in his front yard. And uh, I count for the barrier a a confidant and a close friend, a faithful friend, and uh, appreciate it. We'll say a little bit more about that in just a moment. But I believe that there is destiny in these services, both today, we've got a special session tomorrow evening, and also Sunday morning and Sunday night. I believe that God is changing the trajectory of this church. God is pointing us in the direction that he wants us to go. And he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And I'm excited about what God is doing in this church. It's good to be back home. I appreciate all of the text messages, the love that has been extended to me and my family. And thank you all for being patient with me and my crazy schedule. And uh, But I could not wait. I was sitting on a plane today saying I cannot wait to get to church tonight because this is where it's happening. This is where God is pouring out his spirit. I got to listen into pieces of some of the services. And there's just a spirit of expectation that I feel. There's a spirit of faith that we feel. I want to come to every service saying, God, I want this to be the very best service I've ever been in. I want this to be the most supernatural move of God that I've ever been a part of because God, there is no bounds to what God is going to allow us to experience. The limitation is going to be how much we're wanting from God and reaching for from God. And so I believe that God is going to do some great things in these services. Be inviting someone, invite them out to the services uh, this weekend and believe God to do great and mighty things. Tomorrow night's going to be discipleship and also a leadership class uh, or session for this church. If you are able to be here, please be here. If you're not able to be here in person, we will be streaming it as well. And uh, we will make that available to you. And uh, if, if we need to, I want you to be able to take your liberty. So if we need to make it a, a private link to be able to share, we'll work those details out uh, before tomorrow night. But again, if you are in leadership, if you want to be in leadership or just want to be a part of what God is doing, be here. Everybody is called to minister in the kingdom of God. To what capacity God has different levels of capacity, but everyone is called to minister in the kingdom of God. God wants to use us as his hands, his feet, and his voice, and I want to be a part of what God is doing. We will be publishing the cleaning schedule this week, be looking out for the notification and the email on that. I apologize. I do not have that here, but thank you to who cleaned the church tonight. I believe Sister Lomberger, you cleaned the church for tonight. Thank you for what you do to make the house of God presentable. And also thank you in advance to those who are going to clean the church for this upcoming Sunday morning service. After service, uh, I've got some goodies from 
thousands of miles away. I saw some smiles. Some of you know already what it is. And I uh, brought back some gifts from the island of Taiwan. And so avail yourself to that. If you're uh, brave enough, I hope I have enough for everybody here if you want to try something. But uh, after service, feel free to avail yourself to that. Last thing on the announcements here is men's meeting is October the 8th, Saturday, October the 8th. We will be leaving on Friday evening and driving over. Got some hotels reserved for those who want to be a part of men's meeting. I need to be able to adjust the rooms, though. And so if I could get a show of hands of everybody who's planning on going to men's meeting, if you could let me know now or if you could let me know after service I'm seeing a couple maybes keep them up one all right thank you very much and we'll be working on more of the logistics uh, for that amen how many have been blessed by god amen. how many are thankful for the blessings of god amen, amen. for the pablo if you come help me take up our wednesday evening offering Amen. I want to give as God has given unto me, and I want to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. If you'd pray. Multiply, God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire, set me on fire. Take all I have in these hands and multiply, God all that I am and find my heart on the altar again set me on fire set me on fire here I am God arms wide open pouring out my life Gracefully broken, my heart stands in all of your name, your mighty love stands strong to the end, you will fulfill your purpose in me, you won't forsake me. You will be with me, here I am, God, arms wide open, pouring out my life, gracefully broken, here I am, God. I'm holding nothing back, holding nothing back, I surrender, I surrender.
your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. wide open pouring out my life gracefully broken hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe God's preparing our hearts to receive his word tonight. And uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that God wants us to surrender unto him. You may be struggling with discouragement. You may be struggling even with bitterness. You may be struggling with questions. But tonight, God is saying, surrender it to me. Amen. I want you to give every piece of it. Holding nothing back, God. I'm not going to keep it, God. I'm going to relinquish it completely to your will and to your ways. God, whatever you're working on me, whatever you're dealing with me about, I want to give it completely to you. There's victory in surrender. There's beauty in and brokenness. There's beauty in us giving everything to God and saying, God, I need your help. I need your strength. I need your power. Amen. And there is such strength in surrendering it, a burden that's too big for us to carry. When we put it on the altar before God and say, God, this is too much for me to handle. He says, casting all your cares upon me. He says, because I care for you. God cares for us. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. I believe that God wants to speak to us. And before the man of God comes, I don't want to embarrass him, but I'd like for Brent to come up here for a moment. And Brent was baptized in Jesus' name. Brent Jr., I guess, as some of us know. Brent was baptized in Jesus' name a couple weeks ago. And we are so thankful for what God is doing in Brent's life. And we rejoice over the path that you're heading in towards the things of God. And we rejoice with you. This church loves you. And I know I've missed you for a couple weeks, but it's good to see you here tonight. I'm glad you're back. And we are excited about what God is doing. God is up to big things. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Amen. You've heard me say this before, but... You can't make old friends. You can only make new ones. And so if I don't have old friends in my life, then I've got to look and say, what have I done or not done to maintain some old friends? And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, he and I were very, very young people together growing up and uh, receiving the Holy Ghost in chapel service, I believe at uh, Lighthouse Christian School there and just been a part of what God is doing. Who would have thought a little town called Arroyo Grande all those years ago, thinking that we'd be born, live, and die there, how God would take people on some circuitous paths. Hallelujah. To be right in the middle of where God wants us to be. We can't trade anything. There is nothing in this world that replaces us being right in the middle of the will of God. 
And God has a will and a purpose for your life. And God wants his will accomplished in your life more than you want his will accomplished in your life. And to see how God has knit our souls together over the years, I know that I can call. I know that he is a confidant. I know that he is a friend. And I've been on the phone with him sometimes where he's just starting to speak to me, doesn't know anything that's going on in my life and situation. And God has used him to speak a word to me, to speak a prophetic word to me. And I'm thankful for God old friends, old friends. I guess they say the thing about getting old is all my friends are getting old, but uh, I am thankful for the friendship that we have in Brother Barrier. His lovely wife and daughter are going to be joining us this week for the services this weekend, and uh, we are excited about that. But how many want to hear from God tonight? How many want to open their heart and their spirit and say, God, whatever you want to tell me, Whatever you want to speak to me tonight, God, I'm willing to do it. I wonder if we could lift our hands and open our hearts and our spirits as the man of God comes tonight. God, I want to receive your word. Let's do that together. Would you lift your voice? Would you lift your hands? I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I worship you. Come on, somebody lift your voice. The Holy Ghost is in this house tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let your will be accomplished tonight, God. Let your will be accomplished tonight, God. We worship you. We praise you. Would you clap your hands to the Lord? Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. What a sweet touch of the Holy Ghost in this house tonight and I believe that God has come to help us come to talk to us come to challenge us several moments throughout this service I have felt confirmation for direction tonight and I believe that God God wants to help us we're going to slow down a little bit you've heard me preach many times over the years this is a little different direction, different style tonight. I want to talk to us, teach to us, preach to us. And I believe there's destiny. Pastor has already stated it, but I have felt direction several weeks, yea, even months concerning uh, this weekend. And I believe that God is transitioning this church into another level, another dimension that you've never been before. But in order for the church to go, as a body, the people got to go. And so tonight, it's time for the people to go. And then on Sunday, it's time for the church to go as a body. And I believe that's where we're headed this weekend. I encourage you, Sunday morning, let's be inviting people. I believe that God wants to do some great things Sunday morning. And I feel that in my spirit. I direct your attention to Deuteronomy chapter 32. While you're turning there, let me say what an honor and privilege it is to be here. Be with Pastor Josh and Sister Laura Winkler. Preached many times for Bishop Winkler as pastor. And it's a joy to be here. Seeing what God has done and what God is doing. And our paths go back 35 years, Sister Laura Winkler Sr. gave me my first haircut as a boy, and so it's, it's been a while, and I'm thankful for what God, God is doing. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse number 11, the Bible says, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, and beareth them on her wings. As an eagle stirreth up her nest. And if the Holy Ghost would help us for the next few moments, I want to talk to us from this thought, stirred to grow. Stirred to grow. 
Would you set your Bibles down? Let's pray together and ask that God would be with us for the next few moments here. Jesus, we love you. God, I praise you. I worship you. I'm asking you that you would help us tonight. You would talk to us. You would touch us. You would speak to us through your word. Give us clarity. Give us understanding. And we will not fail to give you praise and glory and honor that you alone are worthy of. We love you tonight. We praise you. We worship you. Hallelujah. One more time, would you clap your hands unto the Lord and give him a shout of praise. He's worthy. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Eagles are one of the most amazing creatures that our magnificent God created. Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs, he said, There be three things which be too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not, the way of an eagle in the air. Eagles are among the largest and the most powerful birds in the world. The eagles are wise. Eagles have been noted as symbols of strength, bravery, courage, and proud independence. When I go to the zoo, there are usually three animals that I'm interested in seeing. Number one, I always like to stop by and see if there's any lions that are roaming around. And then, for some reason, I am fascinated by monkeys. Perhaps it was because I was a huge Curious George fan growing up. Maybe that's the reason. And then, the bald eagle. There's something about the American bald eagle. It was adopted as the emblem of the United States of America in 1782. It was chosen because of its majestic beauty, its great strength and long life, and because it's native to North America, approximately 30 to 35 inches long from beak to tail, weighing 8 to 13 pounds. The wings of an eagle stretch about 7 feet wide. They can carry prey weighing as much as they do up to their nests which are built extremely high eagles may live for 50 years or more eagles keep the same mate for life eagles build their nest in tops of trees high mountain tops or up on high sheer cliffs they have found that some nests built are close to 10,000 feet in the air Talking about an eagle. Job 39, 27 says, Doth the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock in the strong place. When an eagle builds a nest for the first time, it, it's about three feet wide. Keep in mind that the eagle will use the same nest for a lifetime which means an old nest can be as much as 10 feet across and 20 feet deep. I read that in Alaska, some bald eagle nests can weigh as much as two to three tons, close to 6,000 pounds. The inside of the eagle's nest is just as fascinating to me as the size of it. The majority of the nest is made up of twigs and sticks that range from nine to 98 inches long and up to 2 inches in di diameter. And after the nest has been built, just hang with me for a few moments here with sticks. Mom and dad eagles start to look for the softer material to make it a little more comfortable for the baby eaglet. Lots of moss and pine needles are used for padding it. If that's not enough, the eagle will use grass and fur from animals it has killed and its own feathers to help keep the eaglets warm and comfortable. It's a maternal instinct to keep their baby eaglet comfortable and warm in the nest. I have learned since becoming a father that life goes through some changes. I remember being on the other side of it thinking, just get your kids dressed, feed them, 
get on the go and don't be late for it. I've learned it's not always that easy. Life changes. It revolves around my little girl now, providing the best care and the best comfort, no matter what the cost is. And I have been blessed with an incredible wife and watching the maternal instinct that kicks in. And is she hot? Is she cold? Is she okay? And it's a beautiful thing to play out. And, and so you can imagine if you were a baby eaglet that you would never want to leave the comfort of the nest it's safe and it's secure and mom and dad provide all the food and the protection and so why would anybody want to leave that situation and it's a gravy train type of situation and if the baby eaglet stays too long he, he will never know what it is to soar at the heights that he was created to soar to and and so somewhere there comes a time in life when mom and dad have to stir the nest a little bit and say Hey, it's time to grow. It's time to mature. And it's time to become everything that God has called you to become. Because you hear me, if all he ever knows is staying in the comfort of the nest, he will miss out on his very purpose for life. Eagles are not known for sitting in the comfort of the nest. They are known for soaring high into the heavens and riding on the wind. That's what makes them majestic. That's what makes them courageous. I'm not staying here in the nest any longer, but I've been built to fly. I've been built to soar. And if God's calling me to another level then stir my nest because I want to grow and I want to become what God wants me to become and so now the baby eaglet has to leave the nest to fulfill his calling when baby eaglet gets about four or five months old, here comes mama. She comes swooping in one day, and she begins to stir some things up. She begins to pull out the soft lining and begins to pull apart what was comfort and protection for the eaglet. And this forces the eaglet to learn, I've got to stand now. I've got to balance a little bit because the nest has been stirred, and, and I'm not comfortable in the way that I am because now now I can't lay down me because the grass is gone and, and the fur from the animals is gone. I, I don't like this uncomfortableness, but I know if I'm going to be the eagle that I'm supposed to be, then somewhere a stirring has to take place in my world. And I've got to preach to somebody tonight that if you're going to become what God has called you become, it may be uncomfortable at times. It may be inconvenient at times. But God, if you're stirring my nest, if you're stirring some things in my life, I want to be receptive. I want to respond correctly because I'm interested in growing in you. So the sharp twigs are gone. And so those stubby little talons they begin to grow. It's critical in learning. For in the future, this is how the eagle is going to balance himself. This is how the eagle is going to catch his prey. I want you to hang with me tonight. Not everything. I want you to hear me. Not everything that happens in our life is a devil or a demonic attack that is coming after us. Sometimes it's God showing up in our world and stirring our nest. Or in other words, it's God coming along and saying hey it's time to grow in some areas it's time to stretch in some ways you've never been stretched before it's not your adversary but it's God saying hey Northwest Apostolic Church it's time to grow it's time to mature it's time to become everything that God wants you to be and so he stirs he knows, just as Mama Eagle knows, that if we stay in the comfort of where we are, we will never know what it is to fulfill our calling and our purpose. Let me tell you tonight, everyone under the sound of my voice, you've got calling on your life. You've got purpose on your life. You've got 
destiny on your life. And in order for that to come to fruition, God's got to send a stirring every now and then and say, hey, you're getting a little too comfortable in the nest. Hey, you're getting a little too comfortable in that situation. When was the last time you grew a little bit? When was the last time you mature a little bit? And so I'm going to send a stirring your way. I'm going to pull the moss out. I'm going to pull the feathers out because I'm taking you to a place you've never been before. And the only way you're going to get there is if you grow yourself. But I'm afraid we give too much credit to the devil, Pastor. When in reality, it's just God nudging us. It's just God saying, hey, you've been hanging out here too long. You've been comfortable with where you are. And so I'm going to shake some things up. I'm going to stir some things in your world because it's time to leave the child behind and for us to readjust and grow to a place that God wants to make us into the men and women that God has begun designed us to become and in turn we will become the church that God has designed us to become if there's a stirring let me tell you it's for your growth we'll never become what God wants us to become as long as we stay in the nest I will be the first to say I like comfort I like routine. I like knowing what's going to happen next. I like that. It's comfortable and sometimes there's nothing wrong with that. But when God shows up and God starts stirring and God starts nudging, there ought to be some spiritual intuition. There ought to be some spiritual sensitivity that says, hey, I've got to be sensitive and realize it's time for me to wake up. It's time to rub the sleep out of my eyes. I've been here too long. I've been in the nest too long. It's time to get up because God's trying to take me someplace. And the only way that's going to happen is if I get up and move. And so, okay, God, I'm ready to move to another level. I've been hanging out in ankle deep waters. I've been hanging out in waist deep waters and all the time God is saying hey I'm stirring this church I'm not just stirring the church but I'm stirring individuals in the church because I've got waters for them to swim in but as long as they stay in the comfort of the nest they're never going to swim in those waters they're never going to soar to those heights and so I'm going to stir them one more time on a Wednesday night I'm going to send a preacher their way to let them know hey that's not the devil stirring you you, that's God stirring you because he wants to grow you he wants to grow you somebody needs to hear me tonight you've been living on the periphery too long somebody needs to hear me tonight You've been coming to church. You've been doing everything right. You're living for God. But let me tell you, God has stirred you time and time again. And you're not sure what it is. I've come to tell you that's the Holy Ghost saying, hey, let's grow a little bit. I've got a greater calling. I've got a greater anointing. I've got another level. I've got another dimension for you to play on. But you got to get up and respond to the stirring of the Lord. Somebody lift your hands right now. Stir me, Holy Ghost. Stir me, Holy Ghost. I want to respond. You can be seated. Job said it like this. Then I said, I shall die in my nest. And I shall multiply my days as the sand. You talk about somebody that was comfortable in his nest. He had everything he needed. He had built it up to what he had wanted. He was happy. He was content. In our modern day language, Job had houses and cars and land. 
He had wealth and riches. But God said, Job, you're getting a little too comfortable in that nest. And I'm going to send a stirring because there's some things inside of you, Job, that need to grow a little bit. There's some things inside of you that need to mature a little bit. And the Lord said to Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? And then he said a second time, have you looked at my servant Job? And Job, he's just living life like he always had. He's doing the best that he could. But I want you to notice this. God allowed Satan to test him. God allowed Satan to tempt him. Or we could say it like this. God sent a stirring to Job because there was some things in Job's life that needed to be completed. And at the end of the day, Job would look back and say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But you know what I learned in the middle of this? Blessed be the name of the Lord. He can give. He can take away way it's all his anyways that's one thing I learned but I choose to bless the name of the Lord Job you're comfortable but when it's gone can you still bless me Job, the nest is perfect. You have houses. You have land. You have cars. You have all the friends in the world. But if I strip that all away from you, Job, can you still worship me? Can you still show up on a Wednesday night and lift your hands and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm stirring you, Job. I'm stirring you, Job, because there's some things inside that some 2,500 years later in Northwest Apostolic Church, they're going to preach about you not because you gave up when the stirring came, not because you stayed stagnant when the stirring came, but when the stirring came, you said, okay, God, whatever you're trying to do in my world, you can do it because I want to grow. I want to become the man of God that you want me to be. We've got to understand that when things start getting a little crazy and a little out of control in your world, God is stirring some things because he sees something in you and me that needs worked on and he's wanting it to get out of us. He's wanting us to get out of the nest and to fulfill our calling. I'm preaching to people tonight with destiny on your life and God is saying I'm stirring you because you've got a calling you've got a purpose you thought those days were long gone you thought you missed it but he's showing up on a Wednesday night to stir it up again stir it up again you didn't respond correctly last time but will you respond correctly this time what do they sing today here I am here I am I won't give up in the middle of my stirring talking to you tonight that every apostle that did anything great for God had their nest stirred. Every great woman of God that you know about and you've heard about and you've read about had their nest stirred because there comes a point in life at some point we have to leave the familiar for the unfamiliar. We have to leave the profane for the sacred. And we've got to leave the shallows and start to reach for the deep. I believe there are people under the sound of my voice that God is stirring you to grow. Because there's a dimension that you've only dreamed about. There's a level 
that you've only dreamed about, that you never thought was possible. And God's saying, you're right in and of yourself. You'll never make it there. But when I start stirring you and when I grab you by the hand, I can take you anywhere. I can use you to do anything. I can anoint you and give you dominion over any situation. Because that stirring is from me. Oftentimes, we dismiss the stirring from God because we're too comfortable. And we fail to recognize that it's God and not the enemy. And it didn't come to destroy us, but it came to grow us. It's time to mature. It's time to grow in God. If you're at the same place right now that you were last year, something's wrong. If you're at the same place you were when you got in church, something's wrong. There ought to be a perpetual growth that says I can't stay stagnant because it's going to affect my purpose. I know there's stuff we go through. I know life and chance happens to us all. It, it rains on the just and on the unjust. But you hear me, you can't stay there when it starts raining. It's not time to get comfortable in your little nest, but it's time to find an altar. It's time to get in his presence and say, God, I don't understand the rain. I don't understand what's going on. I don't get the story. But if you're trying to grow me in this situation... And let me grow. When there's a stirring, it's God working on our character. There's a brokenness that comes with stirring as we start to realize I'm nothing without Him. I must decrease so that He might increase. The writer said it like this. It's, it's in him that I live, I move, and I, I breathe, and, and I have my being. It's all about him. I, I can't function on my own. I, I can't do it by myself. I, I'm talking to some people tonight. You've been trying to soar all by yourself, and you keep falling flat on your face. And the Holy Ghost sent me here to tell you, you will never be able to do it on your own. But if you get connected to the source of your strength, if you get connected to the source of your anointing, you can soar. You can soar. I can't talk without him. I can't walk without him. I can't function without him. You know what happens when you try to do it on your own? You know what happens when you try to do it by yourself? You'll only make a mess of it. You'll only make a mess of it. And you'll look back years down the road and say, My God, why am I still in the nest? Why am I still in the same stagnant place? I'll tell you why. Because years previous, God sent a stir in your way and you never responded correctly. But God's given you another chance tonight to respond to his stirring. want us to lift our hands right now. Your nest is being stirred. It's time to embrace and ask God, what are you trying to do in my world? It's not always comfortable, but it's always needed because there comes a day when 
when mama swoops back in. She returns to the nest. The writer of Deuteronomy says she begins to flutter her wings over the nest. And that little eaglet begins to scream in terror. His mama begins to push them towards the edge of the nest. Finally, as they're pushed from the edge of the nest, they begin to fall. And as he begins to fall, something starts to take over on the inside of that baby eaglet. It's the will to live and the struggle to survive. The power of flight. It's within the eaglet. God already put it in there. But it's unknown to him because he's never been challenged. I want you to hear me tonight. The power to grow and the power to go into dimensions that you've never been before. It's already on the inside of you. But until you step out from the nest, you will never know what it's like to walk in dimensions of the supernatural. You'll never know what it's like to walk into services and a word doesn't even have to be uttered in the Shekinah glory of his presence begins to flood the room. And people are getting healed. I'm not into melodramatics tonight. But I'm preaching a word from God to you tonight. That as soon as you step. It's unfamiliar. It's unknown. I'm going to fall. But you know what mama eagle never lets the eagle hit the ground. When they stumble. When they're falling and they're screaming and tear. Here they come. They swoop them up. Bring them back to the nest. And push them out again. And push them out again. And push them out again. And finally there comes a day. Where's the eaglet at now? They're soaring in heights. They've never soared before. There's going to be days you stumble. There's going to be days you make a mistake. And he's got to pick you up and set you up again. But there's going to be days that you soar into places you never thought was possible. There's going to be days that you walk into areas and you have dominion like you've never had dominion before. There's going to be days when you start to feel something as you begin to sing and play. And it's an anointing that you've never felt before. And you lay hands on somebody in your school or at your job because you're soaring in places you've never been before. Screams are not a power. They're up terror. But out of the stirring comes the will to live. They flail. There's times I beat the air and I flail. I don't know what I'm doing. God, why did you say to do this? And you step out. And you're already looking for the hand to help you. Because you don't know what you're doing. And God's saying, hey, I stirred you. And if I've called you to get out of the boat, Peter, you're going to be all right. You just got to keep your eyes focused on me. So as the baby eaglet learns to fly out of frustration and struggle in the process, 
Hear me tonight. We find our purpose and our calling through the process of God stirring our nest. Take the struggle away. And you take the strength away. I know the struggle is real. But so is your ability to overcome the struggle, Jacob. I know it seems impossible to change your past and, and to change your name. But, but Jacob, if you'll get in a wrestling match with me, I can change your destiny and I can change your purpose and I can change your name. And your past is not going to define your future. Take the struggle away. And you take the strength away. Everybody's standing tonight. I've got more to preach. But I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. It's what's that eagle? It realizes its ability to soar into the heavens. There's nothing that can stop him from his purpose and his calling. There are three steps, I believe. And I'm closing. To God getting us ready to fulfill our purpose. Number one, separation. Number two, cooperation. And number three, operation. God begins to separate us from the noise of the crowd to see if we're willing to cooperate and submit to his plan before he can release us to operate in our calling. Northwest Apostolic Church, it's time to leave the comfort and the complacency of the nest of where we have been I thank God for where we are. I thank God to what he's brought us to. But it's time to leave the comfort of the nest and grow up into who we were destined to be. With growing and maturing comes responsibility. And if God doesn't see that we've left the nest and we're still relying on others for food, we're still relying on others for protection and warmth and security and transportation and, and money and clothes, we still can't bring something to the table. We're always having our hand out. We've yet to put away childish things. And it's going to be the very thing that keeps us from soaring at the heights that God has called us to. But the baby eaglet doesn't understand is that mama, she's not stirring the nest to hurt. She's not stirring the nest to kill, but she's stirring the nest to grow and to mature and to lead that baby eaglet to his full potential. And we are told that within one year of birth, that baby eaglet will never return to that nest again. He's grown and he's ready to soar at heights of 10,000 feet. God's stirring us tonight. Maturity, it's time to replace immaturity. Growth, it's time to replace complacency. I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to be complacent. I don't want my walk with God to be studded because I wasn't willing to grow. I wasn't willing to be corrected. I wasn't willing to have my nest stirred. I wasn't willing to be inconvenienced. But I want to grow more. I want to become what God has called me to be. And I'm preaching to you tonight that if you've stopped growing along the way, 
You've got good intentions. Your heart is in the right place. But somewhere, you're stagnant. Somewhere, you're complacent. I've come to help you tonight. God's trying to take this church to places it's never been before. But it needs people that are willing to go where they've never been before. And so it's time to get back on track and say on a Wednesday night, as Brother Walker begins to play and get ready to sing, I'm going to make my way to an altar and say, God, have you been stirring me? I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to respond correctly. Last time I turned and I ran the wrong direction. But tonight I'm making my way to an altar. I'm lifting open hands and saying, I surrender to you. I surrender to your calling. I surrender to your purpose. I surrender to your stirring. I'm inviting you tonight. Would you step out from where you are and make your way to an altar and say, God, I give myself to you. I say yes to you. Lord, I You can stir me. My desire. I'm going to respond correctly. Passion at least to be what you call me. Telling you there's a deep sovereign move of the Holy Ghost that wants to sweep into this room. God wants to take you to a place you've never been. What you call me to be. I say yes. Lord, I agree. I say My yes, desire passionately is to be what you've called me to be. And that's what I'll be. What you call me to be, I say yes, Lord. I agree. Oh, somebody, I feel a stir in my desire. Right I Are you going to respond to me? What you call me to be? How are you going to respond? And that's what I'll, God, I'll be. be. I'll be. I'll be what you call me to be. I will be what I'll you go where call you want me, to go. me to be. I want to respond I'll correctly. I'll say yes, Lord, I agree. My desire passionately is to be what you call me to be. That's what oh, I'll that's be. I say God's yes. Calling you. Say, Come on. Yes. Come on, Come on. I agree. Go I say I yes. I want to take you to a place you've never been before. Yes. I agree. I say yes. Yes. I agree. I say yes. You call me to be. Wherever you I want me say to go, yes. God. Whatever you want Lord, me to do, God. I agree. My I desire. Grow. I want to grow. Passionately is to be you. what you've called me to be. Because I want my church to grow. I'll be. I want my church to go deeper. And I want my church to go higher. I want my church to go to places we've never been before. I say yes, Lord, I agree. My desire passionately is to be what you call me to be. And that's what I'll be. I say yes. Yes, I agree. Don't become stagnant. I say yes. Don't become complacent. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. I agree. I say yes. Yes, I agree. I say yes. Yes. I agree, and I will be what 
what you've called me to be. I say yes, Lord, I agree. My desire passionately is to be what you've called me to be. That's what I'll be. I say yes. Holy Ghost in your name. I agree. I say yes. Yes. I agree. I say yes. Yes. I agree. I say yes, Lord. Somebody lift your voice. Lift your voice. God's working on us tonight. That's what I'll be. I will be what you call me to be. I say yes. Lord, I agree. My desire passionately is to be what you call me to be. That's what I'll be. I say yes, yes, I agree, I say yes, yes, I agree, I say yes, yes, I agree, I say yes. What you call me to be, I say yes, Lord, I agree, my desire passionately is to be what you call me to be, that's what I'll be, I say yes, yes. Yeah. 
We're going to sing this one more time as a prayer. Every head raised, every voice lifted. Let's sing it together. Oh, God's doing great things tonight. I will be what you call me. me to be. What you call me to be. I say yes. Lord, I agree. My desire, passionately, is to be what you've called me to be. That's what I'll be. I say yes, yes. I agree. I say yes, Lord. Yes, I agree. I say yes, yes. I agree. I say yes, yes. I agree. I say yes, yes. I say yes, Lord, I agree, my desire passionately is to 